Hi, I'm Goose, and welcome back again to Color Theory and Minecraft. This is episode three of the deep dive into color theory, and we are going to be talking about primary colors. It's a pretty quick one, but I think it's a very important one too. Right here we have a traditional red, yellow, and blue primary with their complements. Red and green, blue and orange, yellow and purple. This is most likely what you were taught in art class or heard when you were younger about your primaries. Red, yellow, and blue are the primaries because they can't be mixed. You can't mix two colors and get blue or mix two colors and get yellow. The problem is this is close, kind of like Herring's opponent process theory was close, but this isn't entirely correct in all situations. Sometimes it is, and we'll talk about the exceptions, but generally speaking, this is not a correct primary and secondary group. Now for me to explain what I mean by this, there's one thing I have to explain first, and that is additive and subtractive color mixing. Additive color mixing is what we get when we mix colors of light. Our primaries here are red, green, and blue, RGB, and this is how things like computer monitors work. Every pixel is a red, green, and blue light, and using different ratios of those three, we can get all the colors we see on our screens. When you mix all the colors in the additive system together, you get white light. Subtractive color mixing is what we get when we mix physical things like paint and ink. Our primaries are cyan, magenta, and yellow, and when you mix all the primaries together in a subtractive model, you get black as your result. You'll see this most often on printers. You have CMYK. The reason they include black is to save ink. In order to mix that black, they would have to use a lot of each one of the other colors, but you can get the full range with just cyan, magenta, and yellow. The colors in between the primaries are our secondary colors for each system. Now you might notice something weird. We have red, blue, and yellow. But haven't we always been taught that red, blue, and yellow are primaries and you can't mix them with other colors? Well, turns out that's not true. When we're working with inks, if we mix magenta and cyan, you get blue. You mix magenta and yellow, you get red. Now you can't mix yellow in a subtractive model, but you can mix yellow in an additive model. If you put a red light and a green light together, you get yellow. You may also notice that in these two models, the secondaries and primaries are switched. In additive, we have red, green, and blue as the primaries, but in subtractive, we have red, green, and blue as the secondaries. Same thing goes for cyan, magenta, and yellow in additive and subtractive. When we see something that appears red, what that means is that that object is absorbing all the colors of light except for red. When white light hits this, the green light and the blue light get absorbed and stay there and the red light is reflected back and hits us in the eye. It appears red because the only wavelength that is reaching our eye is the red wavelength. Item sorters in Minecraft work in a very similar way. We'll imagine that this is a red object that we see out in the world. Coming in from the left is going to be white light that is split up into blue, green, and red light. And then over here is what is going to reach the eye and what we perceive. When we throw in the three components of white light, some of them get filtered out and absorbed into the object, and only one of them comes out the end, the red light. Remember that white light is just a mixture of green, red, and blue light. In order for us to see something as magenta, it means that object needs to reflect back only magenta light. Now we get magenta light by mixing red and blue. That means an object that is magenta absorbs the green light so that only red and blue light reach our eye, so we see magenta. A cyan object needs to reflect cyan light. Cyan light is made by mixing green light and blue light, so a cyan object will be absorbing all of the red light. So we only have green light and blue light coming back, so we see cyan. Now if we mix together magenta and cyan, we have a color that is going to absorb all of the green, and we have a color that is going to absorb all the red. This means that the only color that is being reflected back to our eye is the blue light. This is why mixing cyan and magenta will give you blue, because all the other wavelengths of light are absorbed by these two colors, leaving only one that can reach our eye. Now that we understand a bit more about the pure primaries of additive and subtractive mixing, I can talk a little bit more about this. Red, yellow, and blue are called the painter's primaries. The reason for this is because for a very long time, red, yellow, and blue were the closest that we had to cyan, magenta, and yellow. 
Pigments that are cyan, magenta, and yellow are very recent discoveries. Painters had to work with what was called a limited palette because we can't make every single color that we see with paint. Sometimes we have limitations. Even yellow pigments are relatively new. For a long time, the closest we got was yellow ochre, and that's a little bit closer to orange than it is to yellow. Even though these here aren't true primaries, we've still developed a very complicated and accurate system for mixing and matching colors using red, yellow, and blue as our primaries. We also have a system for red, green, and blue, and we have a system for cyan, magenta, and yellow. So, now that you understand what color is and how it works, we're really going to get into the theory part of color theory in the next episode. See you soon.